I am in Old Fadama, a community bursting with life, laughter and faith. These people have nothing and for the most part live without hope daily. Yet, the West smiles as if all is well, relying on the communal bond they share. Despite their brave exterior, the lack of toilets in their homes as a great source of worry. This wooden structure is a public toilet that has served thousands of residents in the community for the past decade. The facility is clearly in a deplorable state. Patrons would have to squat on wood and defecate into a plastic basin which will later be disposed of by men. With seven toilet cubicles for males and the same for females, they sell their toilet roll and the alternative newspaper at 50 pesos. 32-year-old Adam Al-Hassan is the caretaker here. You are see inside a funeral member of Papa. I have cleaners who clean here often. They scrub the entire floor with a broom to make it look nice. They also pour the feces into a tank for waste tankers to pick it up. This is a female public toilet in Old Fadama that serves a number of women and girls that live in this community. Now this public toilet is developing huge cracks which is posing as a death trap to most of the women who patronize it. 19-year-old Atinka Fuseni is six months pregnant. She tells me the trauma she goes through while patronizing the facility daily in her state. Because of my six month pregnancy, when I go there, I didn't feel well. When I see the scraps, I feel scared. Seista Abdullahi shares same sentiments. Because of the crack, if I go there, I don't feel. Many believe that it is only in slum areas that toilets tend to be of squat variety, but there are some worse experiences in other suburbs. I saw an example of that in a public toilet in Choco, a densely populated suburb of Accra. Most residents patronize the UDI public toilet at a fee of 50 pesos per go. The facility from the outside looks quite good, but the stench in there is horrible. The toilet bowls have brown stains. The doors are all broken and the system also does not work. Residents have also turned the toilet facility into a smoking joint. 25-year-old Nana Kwame, not his real name, was secretly captured. Nana Kwame said smoking in the toilet helps him to deal with the overpowering stench. For me, I like it like that. Even though women are more predisposed to infections, 52-year-old Chakusela Akusuya Adiza believes this toilet is the cleanest she has ever seen. A claim I will put to the test later. I sit on the toilet bowl to ease myself. The facility looks beautiful and it's good for me. It is 7.52 a.m. the next morning and 35-year-old Bra Kofi is here to clean the toilet. Kofi does not have any professional training on how to tidy up such a facility. How he wore his only gloves before work marveled me. Neither did he bother with a nose mask despite public education to protect oneself and others. I enjoy the work I do here. There are no jobs around, so this is the only job I can rely on. I sometimes get sick, but when I take medicine, it calms me down. I get severe headache. To my shock, Kofi dipped the mop in the WC and mopped the entire floor. It took him 45 minutes to clean up the entire facility. 
I have to clean the toilet to attract customers so that I can be paid at the end of the month. I am paid 350 Ghana cities monthly, which is not enough. Esther Edu Jamina is a consultant in cleaning and hygiene management working with private sector institutions. She agreed to do a hygiene test for us at the public toilet in Choco. Adenosine triphosphate, ATP, reveals all kinds of things otherwise invisible to us. Dirt, urine, fecal sprinkle. She began from the men's toilet. What Steve is doing is that he's taking the um, places that people are normally supposed to touch and then he's putting it in the machine to pick up the reading and then we will let you know the result. The facility has a very high contamination level of 2,700 units. With the test done, we are getting um, 2,700 as the level of contamination. And indeed, from experience, we see this as a very huge uh, amount because mostly you, you wouldn't get to that amount. We have this young boy here who is currently sitting on the water closet. He has no idea about what he could contract. Yes. Um, as a specialist, what can you say about what you're seeing? Yes, so this is where um, education and then sensitization comes in, public education. We, we, it's about time we started educating people on the essence of keeping good hygiene. Whoever is made to stay here as the keeper should be also trained. For kids like this, he doesn't know. So when a child like this comes in, the person who is here is supposed to offer him the necessary guidance that when you go there, um, you need to pick this and clean up the seeds very well, put it in the basket, and I mean, go through the necessary guidelines with a child. She also tested the hand-washing basin. The level of contamination from our test done is 348, and that means it is highly contaminated. You might think you've washed your hands and you've closed the tap, but you, you have no idea what you are sending back home. Bacteria, it, it's, it's the base of almost all kinds of diseases. You can get um, cold, you can get... Um, um, you can cough, you can have sore throat, you can have diarrhea, you can have um, uh, uh, so many kinds of diseases like we all know. A number of communities like Nima also grapple with poor hygiene and awful stench at their public toilets. The windows of this KVIP in Nima have all been destroyed while wastewater from the toilet have taken over the facility, emitting a pungent smell to the pleasure of patrons. Margots and houseflies have taken over the facility. According to the director of the Public Health Department of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, Florence Kuchi, management of public toilets has been a hurdle. In fact, as an environmental health officer, I am a field worker and I visit this toilet a lot. You go there, you can see a public toilet with a cracked WC bowl and it is still standing there and people are sitting on it. Notwithstanding the crack, it is serving as a death trap. Somebody can sit on it and it will crack and then you fall down, you will be hurt. You may die through that. You may even be, uh, become permanently disabled through that. The public toilet facilities do not operate well because they are operating in an ad hoc manner. Everybody is doing anything. As a public toilet operator, you are not supposed to even issue newspaper as an anal cleansing material but as it still stands now you go to the public toilet and some people are still selling newspapers as anal cleansing material in the city the Accra metropolitan assembly ceo muhammad ejesua told me the assembly has observed over the years that public toilet operators and owners have managed their facilities without any clear guidelines and protocols public toilets are owned largely by private individuals and even those that are assembly um, owns um, have been management has been privatized and there are just a handful of them which is still owned and managed by the by the assembly probably i mean just to introduce some efficiency in terms of management and maintenance of it um, but we've observed that uh, its management um, it's been done haphazardly, without clear guidelines and protocols for anyone to follow. We've observed and want to raise the bar a little bit and get our environmental health officers to come up with a clear guidelines, uh, which is in tandem with our bylaws and WHO standards as well. 
only 17% of Accra's residents and 8% of rural Ghanaians have access to an adequate toilet, according to the Ghana Health Service survey in 2020. Poor sanitation and hygiene is the main cause of fecal transmitted infections, FTIs, including cholera and diarrhea diseases, which remains the second leading cause of morbidity and mortality among children. Sustainable Development Goal 6, SDG 6, talks about clean water and sanitation, and it is about time our public toilets receive attention. Reporting for GH1 News, Godwin. Assalamu